Thanks for clicking. The Bank of Canada is set to prematurely end quantitative tightening due to problems in the overnight repo market. This according to this channel over a month ago and according to a recent note to clients coming from RBC. And I have no more concerns. Indeed, we've covered this process at great length on this channel, from the initial announcement on January 3rd that the bank was entering the repo market, to its eventual explanation on Twitter on January 12th, and finally the media picking up on it on January 24th, noting all the while that this could in fact signal a coming end to quantitative tightening, or QT. This tells me that quantitative tightening could be ending sooner than we think. And now, it appears as though that day may have come with RBC in a note to clients saying that it expects the bank to end quantitative tightening at its rate announcement on April 10th, which, if that is the case, raises a number of questions about what happens after quantitative tightening. What's that? Oh, what's that? Yeah, as it could mean lower mortgage rates, but we'll get there. But, as we'll see, a premature end to quantitative tightening also raises questions about the future of Canadian inflation. So, what I want to do today is very, very briefly go over what quantitative tightening is, discuss why RBC says the Bank of Canada is going to be wrapping it up at the earliest of April, and then go over some implications not only for Canadian mortgage rates, but also for Canada's inflation rate. As we've discussed before on this channel, this is an ongoing process with the Bank of Canada potentially loosening monetary policy and all of the inflationary pressures that come with it. We will continue to track this process throughout the year. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, let's get into QT. On to quantitative tightening, or QT. Very briefly, as we've discussed this before at great length on this channel, QT is basically the opposite of QE, or quantitative easing. The Bank of Canada undertook QE during the pandemic, buying up hundreds of billions of dollars of government bonds from the banks as a means of injecting money into the system and lowering interest rates. As a result, at the height of QE, the banks had almost $400 billion in their accounts at the central bank, and the Bank of Canada owned about $430 billion worth of government bonds. Meaning, whereas the government once owed the banks that $430 billion, it now owed that money to the Bank of Canada. You got five days to give me my money. With quantitative tightening, however, almost the opposite is occurring. When the government pays back that money to the Bank of Canada, the government gets that money from the markets, pulls that money out of the system, that money goes to the Bank of Canada, and then that money ceases to exist. So the government takes that money out of the market by issuing new bonds, pays back the Bank of Canada, that money disappears. This is one of the ways that the Bank of Canada reduced inflation, pulling out all of the money that it printed during the pandemic, reduced the money supply, which it's been doing, and inflation goes down. Regardless, the Bank of Canada, says RBC, will probably be ending this process of quantitative tightening at its April rate announcement. And as to the reason for the end of quantitative tightening, we can look to the Bank of Canada's overnight repo operations, where the banks not willing to lend each other money, the Bank of Canada has had to step in and inject money into the system over the past month. Or what the Financial Post calls quantitative tightening ending due to indicators in the short term funding market. Feed them and keep them in the dock. Yeah, or in more accurate terms, the central bank has pulled out so much money out of the system vis-a-vis -vis quantitative tightening that there isn't enough money for the banks to lend to each other, and as such, the central bank has had to step in. As such, says RBC, the Bank of Canada is set to end quantitative tightening, meaning it will resume buying Canadian government bonds to replace those coming due. So, whereas during quantitative tightening, when a government bond came due, the government of Canada would issue a bond to the market, the market would give the money to the government, the government would pay the Bank of Canada, and that money would cease to exist. Under this new system, with the end of quantitative tightening, when a bond comes due, the government will pay the Bank of Canada, and the Bank of Canada will take that money and buy a new bond. Meaning, putting that money back into the system, no longer sucking money out of the market, which was meant to reduce inflation. But, so what? What are the implications to the Bank of Canada starting to buy up bonds again? It'll be a good summer. <laughs> now, there isn't that much news or analysis available on what happens when the Bank of Canada ends quantitative tightening, so we're going to have to look to our neighbors to the south, to the United States, which has A, more of a history with quantitative tightening, and B, reporters that understand it. You like stuff? First, and I think some would say foremost, the central bank re-entering the market means one more buyer available to purchase up government bonds. Up until now, the market, the buyers of government debt, consisted of banks, pension funds, insurance companies, UNI, etc. But 
Now, with the money printer entering into the market, with a money printer willing to buy up new government bonds, that means more demand. And with more demand means prices go up. This is why investors were so excited at the beginning of January when they thought that the Federal Reserve was going to be prematurely ending quantitative tightening, with JP Morgan noting that with the Federal Reserve resuming the purchase of government bonds, that should help the bond market. With more demand for government bonds, all things being equal, the price of those bonds should go up. And, as we've talked about before, with bond prices and yields being inversely related, when bond prices go up, yields go down, and when yields go down, mortgage rates follow. The Bank of Canada ends QT, all things being equal, we should see bond prices increase, which will send yields down, which will, in fact, send mortgage rates down as well. Yes! However, the second and completely predictable consequence of the end of QT is that there will be one less tool being used by the Bank of Canada to cool down inflation. Central banks use two different tools to cool inflation. One, interest rates, that's the most talked about tool, and the other is quantitative tightening. And if the central bank is no longer using quantitative tightening, if the central bank is no longer reducing the money supply, pulling that money out of the system, that's one less tool being used to fight inflation at a time when inflation is proving more stickier than many had anticipated. And if we take the modification of both tools together, the central bank is A, no longer pulling money out of the system, no longer reducing the money supply, and B, its other tool, interest rates, it would be actively pushing those rates down, actively lowering mortgage rates, which would encourage borrowing, spending, real estate purchases, and real estate commissions. I should have written it down. Yeah, make no mistake, an end to quantitative tightening is a loosening of monetary policy. It is a move in that direction. When the Fed ended quantitative tightening in September of 2019 after the repo market blew up, sound familiar, Daniel DiMartino Booth noted at the time that this was the second step in the Fed's easing process. In fact, Fed Chair Powell said at the time that in the midst of the Fed ending QT, they were more concerned about inflation being too low. So, RBC says that the Bank of Canada is going to be ending quantitative tightening as early as April, due in large part to the lack of liquidity in the system, due in large part to problems in the overnight repo market. Now, were I to place a wager, I would guess that when Governor Macklem announces the end to quantitative tightening, he will say something like the Governing Council judged that it was appropriate to normalize the balance sheet, or, as RBC puts it, returning to a stable balance sheet policy, after which the media will completely ignore the policy they don't understand and move on to rate cuts for the 15th time that conference. You got me. But before that happens, before the Bank of Canada announces that this is nothing but a return to normal, let's remember that Bank of Canada Deputy Governor Tony Gravel announced last year that the bank didn't expect it would have to end quantitative tightening until bank balances had fallen to 20 to 60 billion dollars. Which I think is important to remember as if the Bank of Canada ends QT in April, it will be ending QT when the banks still have roughly 100 billion dollars in their accounts at the Bank of Canada. So if the central bank ends QT while the banks still have all that money sitting on reserve at the Bank of Canada, the central bank is A, ending QT before it thought it would have to, B, ending QT before the inflation fight is won. And the reason for the premature end to QT, the premature end to quantitative tightening, is of course a lack of liquidity in the system. Problems in the repo market, something that the Bank of Canada said was completely normal. So we have RBC catching on to the story coming from the Bank of Canada, noting that the bank will probably have to end quantitative tightening and its tightening of monetary policy to a certain extent at its rate announcement in April. This will be an obvious shift in monetary policy, which could A, push down fixed mortgage rates, and B, push back up inflation. And make no mistake, the Bank of Canada will be doing this not because the inflation fight is won, but rather due to a lack of liquidity on the books of the banks, a lack of money in the system that the Bank of Canada has pulled out. With that said, this is an ongoing process and we will obviously continue to track that process and its effects on the Canadian economy and interest rates on this channel. Click like and subscribe if you want to get those updates, but for now, thanks so much for watching.